Happy Monday. Happy Coffee Talk Monday. Thanks for joining Dr. Michelle. I hope that you had awesome, awesome time off or holidays, however it is that you look at it. And welcome to 2022. I'm not going to really talk about New Year's resolutions today, but you may have heard me talk about them in the past, and I'm not a huge fan of them because I feel like we should all be trying to figure out on a day-to-day -day basis what we want to do, what we want to do different, what we want to change, what we want to work on, however it is that you want to frame that conversation in your head, rather than just waiting till the beginning of the year. So hopefully you are doing that on an ongoing basis and don't have to just like have this big bunch of like really huge goals to start off your new year because whew, that is overwhelming and chances are pretty good if you didn't meet them last year they're on your list this year and maybe the same five this year that you had last yeah it's too complex Anyway, if um, you haven't listened to my coffee talk on goal setting, please go back and listen to that. And I don't know where I talked about New Year's resolutions. I don't know if I talked about it on coffee talk, but I have plenty of blogs to talk about the do's and the don'ts of New Year's resolutions. Mainly the don'ts. Don't do it. I think that's my opinion, of course. But today, I want to talk about a new mini course I have coming out soon in the month of January for sure. If you go to beatingthefear.com, you can get more information about that and sign up to take the course and get more information about it if you're interested. So I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about fear because that is kind of the basis and the foundation of a lot of hard, difficult things that we feel and that go on for us. The important thing to understand about fear is that it is in our DNA and it's an inherent part of us because we need that to protect us from things that are happening in our environment. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have the reaction or the response to be able to deal with some things that are happening. The problem is that we build up our response to other things that aren't necessarily fearful and turn that into something that we become afraid of. And then that becomes sort of a habit. For example, playing a tennis match or running a marathon or swimming a race at a meet or giving a presentation. So what happens is we build up this fear response and reaction to doing these things for reasons that are really outside of our control, kind of other people and their expectations and focusing on time, place, perfectionism, all of these things then like the stress and pressure builds up this like fear in us. And so then that becomes our response and our reaction and that becomes habitual and we have fear to something that we shouldn't really have fear around. Let me give you an example. At the beginning of a tennis match, many tennis players have fear around losing, but you haven't even played yet. 
the same with swimmers, the same with someone giving a presentation, the same with a musician playing a concert. How can you be afraid of something that hasn't happened yet and afraid of something that isn't like the tiger chasing you or the bear chasing you or whatever. But we build up this fear and this reaction to something that hasn't happened yet and that we shouldn't be frightened of in the sense of fright or fear. And we do this a lot in our world something that's there to sort of protect us then doesn't protect us and holds us back from doing what we need to do. And so differentiating those two things, I think is critically important, right? What should we really be afraid of and what shouldn't we sort of be afraid of or be afraid of right now? And why are we afraid of that? And again, that hinges a lot on other people, stress, expectations. Um, it also hinges a lot on us spending a lot of time focusing on things that we don't have control of, right? As I talked about, if you're playing a tennis match, you don't have control over the outcome right now. So why are you focused on that, right? Make sense? So there's kind of real fear and I don't want to say imagined fear, but sort of, right? Um, sort of the, maybe the wrong response to a situation. So part of what I have to do is really help clients figure out how to respond appropriately to situations, right? How do I cope with situations in a different way? And if you sign up for my beatingthefear.com mini workshop that's coming up, you will also have a better understanding of this and how to react to, to it, but also how to build up confidence so that you have the armor against it. I think that's all for now. Anyway, happy beginning start of 2022. This is Dr. Michelle, and I'm always glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I am grateful for you. Take care, and I'll see you next week.